Life is so busy. If you blink, you can miss something amazing. It's important to take a moment and enjoy what we have and the people around us. I'm Mo Hagen, Chief Operating Officer for Campit Pro, and welcome to A Moment with Mo, a podcast where I will welcome some incredible guests to talk fitness and nutrition, mindset and self-improvement, setting your goals into action, and much, much more. Now let's get chatting. Hello and welcome along to episode number three, A Moment with Mo. This month's podcast is inspired by my blog that is titled Inspiring All Women to Lead with Courage. It is, of course, International Women's Day again this March 8th. And this year's theme for International Women's Day is hashtag embrace equity. Now, that is an amazing and necessary theme once again. Why? Because the fact is, when it comes to women in leadership, we still have a lot of work to do. In 2022, Statistics Canada reported that women make up only 35.6% of management positions. Yes, 35.6% of all leadership positions in management and above. Gender diversity in the workplace is important, not only from a point of view of gender justice, but also because it's been shown by many studies, including McKinsey and Company in 2020, that companies with high, higher levels of gender, ethics, ethnic, and cultural diversity are more likely to outperform their less diverse peers on profitability alone. And that's also been cited in the Canadian Women's Foundation in 2022. So I would encourage you to subscribe to my blog. You can find that through my website at mohagan.com. That's where you can download my blog for March, where you can read the entire blog and you can access all the links to these research papers and reports. In this blog, I also share with you some of the opportunities and events that Give me hope for a new direction for women in leadership here in Canada and across the globe. When I think about women inspiring change in leadership on a global level, I think of Michelle Obama. She's someone that continually inspires me. And one of the quotes that she once said was, history has shown that courage can be contagious and hope can take on a life of its own. When I reflect on that quote, I think courage is then the spark and hope is the fire. Think about that for a moment. Courage is also the theme for CamFit Pro's 30th anniversary. And I've been privileged to work with CamFit Pro for all 30 of those years. And this is a time when we all have the opportunity as well as the responsibility to step forward, to lead not only the fitness industry, but I would think all industries and professions forward, but it does take courage. Inspiring women to lead is, and lead with courage is more important than ever. And that is why I'm inviting my dear friend, industry colleague, and a woman that has led with courage for so many years, but most recently in her transformation within her profession. And I'd like to invite you to meet Kim Basler. Hello, Mo. It's so good to be here with you. I'm so excited for this conversation. Oh, me too. Kim and I talk a lot, (laughs) and especially as we've been mastermind partners for a number of years now, and I'm so grateful that you uh, stepped forward into a Why Mastermind event in January of 2020, I believe it was then. I've lost track of time. The years have flown by, and I think we all know why it's just blended together in the lockdown. But Kim, you and I have committed to ongoing conversations about leadership, about stepping forward with our courage to lead. And you have done incredible work that has been not only rewarding for those, the women and the men, those that you actually now coach, but also for the fitness industry. And we're going to talk a lot about your, your work and your recognition I want to first of all give you give everyone who's viewing and listening to this the opportunity to meet you. So, I'm just going to share a brief bio for those that haven't had the opportunity to meet or work with Kim Basler. Kim is a food freedom and mindset coach, 
a published author and CamFit Pro's new presenter of the year for her work on body image and mental wellness. With 30 years in the industry, Kim specializes in disordered eating, body diversity, and helping women improve their self-worth beyond the number on the scale. So thank you, Kim, for bringing that great insight and that courageous subject matter to the industry. It's been a work in progress. And similar to women in leadership, I imagine you'd agree we still have a lot of work to do. We, we sure do, but it certainly fills me with hope to see the progress that is happening. I was recently talking uh, with people about how Canada, actually the podcast that I was just on that you listened to, how Canada is definitely leading, leading. And I see this in the fitness industry and I've heard this through other fitness professionals who go to other conferences throughout the world. And we are doing great things here in Canada. Do we have a way to go? <laughs> yes, we have a ways to go, but um, steps forward are important. So thank you for that. Thank you for, for being one of those people that is making that change happen. Oh, uh, well, I have to say that CamFit Pro is the vehicle to bring education and certification and courses to the market to serve our members. It is you, the presenters and the leaders and experts out there that are courageously bringing us the subject matter and and inviting us to take a look at it and consider it. So thank you. And thank you. Uh, I want to share something, a quote that you published in our January, February CamFit Pro magazine. And that is um, a member magazine that uh, is, I would think, one of the most valuable pieces of being a member at CamFit Pro. And, and in the article, it was titled, Women Who Influence, Belonging as Truly Defined by the Life of Dorothy Walsh. Now, before I share your quote, because I think it was, it, I know it was one of the major takeaways that is also a lesson that Dorothy herself exemplified, but also uh, shared and encouraged us to lead with. I do want to say for those who may not know who we're talking about, Dorothy Walsh, she was an amazing woman who Kim and I both knew for decades. And I worked very closely with in my role at Good Life Fitness for decades. And uh, Dorothy was a cheerleader and mentored thousands of women who moved into leadership positions, not only at Good Life Fitness, but within the fitness industry. She was the first attendee at Women Who Influenced 10 years ago, and she attended our last event last summer. Unfortunately, Dorothy passed away in the late fall, just shy of her 103rd birthday, no less. And I'm going to leave it at that because if I say anything more, we're both going to start to tear up. So uh, Dorothy certainly is uh, a role model for embracing equity. And she not only encouraged it, but she demanded it. And if you knew Dorothy, you know what I mean? <laughs> so Kim, here's your quote. I'd love you to hear uh, for you to hear the quote back and then comment on it. If you may to truly belong, we owe it to ourselves to move towards authentic authenticity in the ways we interact with one another but first within ourselves. When we fully accept the unique traits that make us who we are and embrace them unapologetically, we can share them with the world. Step into your courage and allow yourself to be seen and the universe will reward you for being your authentic self. So hearing that back, what are your thoughts on what you published in that article? I was saying some pretty good words there. <laughs> That's what I will say. You know what? Hearing it back, like I was very moved by that experience, being at um, Women Who Influence, knowing Dorothy, and this journey that I've been on in the last five and a half years, for sure, as I've been on this transformation, is really allowing myself to, to be proud of who I am. And I often say to people that when we have lived, so many of us have lived in this world putting on the masks, being someone who we think we're supposed to be, not allowing ourselves to own our strengths because we don't want to shine too much or constantly being in comparison with somebody else because we're so focused on all the things that we believe we're not that we can't even embrace all the things that we are. So me allowing myself to find, and I'm on that journey still, I want to remind myself and everyone that we're always on this journey of, of being authentic, because to, to be oneself, to show up in a room and not change who we are in order to fit in, 
but to, to know that you have strengths that you might have weaknesses, we all have them, but to still be able to be yourself in that room makes such a difference because then you can, you can allow yourself, you shine differently. I always say that I shine differently. Now people have said that to me. And when I'm allowing myself to be me, then I'm able to make deeper impact. I'm able to inspire other people because I'm speaking my truth. And that's what I encourage other people to, to do as well. So uh, everyone, we all have to do this. And if you believe you're, you're authentic, I would encourage you to, to continue to look at yourself because we're, we're always on that path of, of being as true to ourselves as we can. And the courage is contagious when it comes to authenticity. I feel that the more authentic we become, the more contagious it is. Therefore, we become even more authentic and we give others permission to become the same. And I think you have witnessed that too, not only with the way that you have shown up in one-on-one, in large groups, on stages, and it, you can feel the different connection, right, with your audience. Absolutely. Like when I can go on a stage, and I can still be nervous on that stage, but I make that promise to myself to be me on that stage. My impact is different. Uh, I reach people differently. I reach the people that are meant to, to learn from me, to be inspired by me. And when you do that, and then people come up to you afterwards and they're like, wow, I felt that way too. And then you just are reminded, we do need that at the beginning of our, you know, throughout life, we do need that as human beings to know that what we're saying has impact for people. I think that that's just one of our core needs, but it rewards you and then it inspires other people to do it. And it is a contagious energy because ultimately, which I'm sure we'll talk about today is I believe in collaborating. I believe in us helping one another. We are not here to, to stay on our path by ourselves. Oh, yes. So true. We're not here to walk the path alone. Although as leaders, sometimes we need to step forward first, but it really is about how we connect and bring others along that is true leadership. So we will dive into that. I also would love everyone to know that um, in the same issue of this magazine, we actually interviewed the recipient of our Sharon Mann Inspiration Award and Scholarship, and that would be you. <laughs> So congratulations on that. The question that we asked of you in that interview, and I'd love you to paraphrase here again, because it was so powerful. Uh, the question was, what is the most important thing that professionals should do and or work on to set themselves apart? Do share. Yeah, that is to show yourself to we, especially when it comes to social media, even, but even being in, in person with people, we're afraid to allow ourselves to be, to be seen, to express why we do what we do. And I have an online business and that's where my business has grown from. And we know that there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of distraction on social. And so what has been hugely impactful for me is to be myself, to show myself, to show myself uh, failing at things, to talk about my hard times, to be authentic when I'm going through through some challenges, because it causes us to relate. Nobody relates to somebody who has the quote unquote perfect life. Uh, it's not relatable. And actually, quite honestly, people are tired of that perfect, perfect um, view. We want real people. And it's the realness that is causing people to want to connect with you. So I know for me, the more real I am, the more vulnerable I am, the more people come into my life. And I've, I've seen it time and time again. It's what brings people to want to work with me is my realness. So we have to do that. We have to show more of ourself uh, so that people can relate to us. And that takes courage, does it not? Oh, it does. It does for sure. But you know what? The more you do it, the easier it gets. And I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not saying we have to share every single part of ourselves, we get to decide. And um, I, I will reference Brene Brown here for a minute. Like if you're going through some challenges, you never want to share when you're like in the thick of things. You want to share when you've been, you're removed from it. And you know, you've, your, your, your wounds have healed a little bit, but um, gosh, it takes courage, but it feels really good. I, I always say that my sharing is what has helped me on this healing journey. It's been mm. cathartic for me. It's been allowing me to speak out everything that I've been carrying inside of me for so many years. And that feels really good. So as much as I'm doing it for everybody that I'm inspiring and impacting and leading, I'm a hundred percent doing it for myself. And I am proudly admitting that. 
Wow. Well, that's all right. It's kind of the analogy that we hear for the safety video on airplanes. Mm -hmm. You first have to put on your own oxygen mask before you can help others. So you have to do the work for yourself and be selfish to be selfless. Mm -hmm. And so thank you. I mean, if that's not courage, I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. So thank you for being on so brave to share that. And I can often we hear, I know I, I share this a lot is that always start with your why. Like, it, you know, if you know why the way appears and if you're feeling not authentic or lost on your journey, go back to your why. I have had people say to me, well, how do I know what my why is? So in your transformation over the last five and a half or so years, what, how did you discover what was your why in order to shape your new path that you're now on? Oh, that's a big question. So I guess my why came from recognizing where my pain was. And pain oh, pain is a big word, but there was a lot of pain. And, and I know now that there is a lot of people living with that same pain. And so my why has been here to help me make the connections with people, make people feel, make people recognize where they're not living as their truest self. Here's what I've recognized is when I'm living in more of an authentic place, being myself, uh, living in more alignment with my why, with why I'm here. I believe that every single one of us has a calling. Our souls are here for a purpose. When we are living with that purpose, things feel so much easier. It's so much easier to to do what lights your heart up, where where time can just stop because you're so immersed in what it is that you love to do. So when you have a when you understand your why, then when you're going through some hardships, when things feel challenging, when you have to overcome fears and things that are trying to hold you back, you can go back to your why and it helps to move you through it. That's the only way that I can summarize this, but um and not here, I guess the other thing I want to say to you, Mo, is that some people have said to me, but I don't know my why. And then they wait so long and they're trying to figure out why they're here. We lose time that way too. So what I say to that is just go and do the things that make you feel good. Go and do the things that that what you see as your, they're just the regular things about you. You might take them for granted, but when you're doing them, other people light up around you people say thank you to you. Like that lets you know that you're in your soul's path. So Mm. that's a little bit of a hint anyways, if people are on that journey. But the the bottom line is, Mo, is that we can change. We all change. I've changed dramatically. So your why can change and let it happen. But underneath that, the, um, the drivers, the passion usually is coming from the same place. That's absolutely true, I believe. I also find, and this is where I've helped others with their why, when they're like, because sometimes it's, It's in them, it's within them, it's around them every day and they don't know it. But if you ask somebody, if you could wake up each morning and do only what brings you joy and aligns you, again, with your purpose, how do you want to serve the world with your best authentic self? And another way to look at it is when you look back on your life, what do you want to be remembered for? And when people answer that question, it typically reveals their why. Absolutely. And I think the other thing we do, Mo, is we downgrade our why. Mm. We don't feel like it's big enough, right? We we just we dismiss it. And again, we we are all here for different reasons. We don't need a whole bunch of copycats out in the world, right? So yeah, you know, yeah. I, I fully, fully agree with what yeah. you just shared there. A few of us have a twin in the world like me, but even my twin is nothing like me. So mm-hmm. we're all, we're our unique self, as you say, a unique soul that is here for a reason to serve the world in our own authentic way. And we, we'd be doing a disservice to ourselves and to the world if we didn't actually show up as what was intended. And that's probably a great segue to the point around what defines success, because a lot of people think success has to be big. It has to be awards. It has to be you know, titles, but really the guide to success is the steps you take to move yourself forward in with your why that is your guide. And it's not how much you do or how big it is. It's the fact that you are moving forward in the direction of your true purpose. In January, I wrote what was supposed to be 
my monthly blog, it turned out to be a four part series. So I created a workbook. Uh, and for those who are interested in it, the workbook is a Mo's Guide to Success for those ready to move forward in 2023. And I thought to myself, well, we're all moving forward, but you know, maybe we're not. Some of us might feel like we're stuck. So I think the I have received a lot of feedback on it and a lot of invitations to talk more about it. So quite honestly, Kim, that's what inspired this podcast because I, I tend to have a lot to share and say. Well, and that's the thing. What we're feeling, other people are feeling too. Absolutely. And this, oh, absolutely. This, this term success, you know, in our masculine world, success is often about like numbers. How much money do you have? Uh, what kind of house do you have? Are you married? Do you have children? How far have you grown your business? But I mean, is that, I think that's just a, a question I'd like to lend out to your audiences. Is this, like, you don't have to measure your success the way you measure some, where, the way somebody else measures theirs. It's such an individual path. And Absolutely. as long as, as long as you're moving forward and you're seeing yourself growing, because if we're not growing, then, you know, the expression is that we're dying. Um, mm -hmm. But bottom line is we are here to grow and growth means learning. Growth means failure. Growth means trying again. And that brings us together. Ah, key. That's the key. We're going to move into con to getting together connection. And uh, I said that uh, in my series, I said that connection and a course of action is needed to achieve success. And when I mean connection, you can define it so many different ways. I'd love to define it as the connection between our bodies, our environment, our lifestyle, our daily habits, and with other people. That's the power. And we've come to appreciate the power and the, the energetic power of connection with other humans. Kim, I'd love to, um, first of all, talk about why connection with others is so important. Um, you have a motto. Would you mind sharing about that as it ties into the importance of connecting with others? My motto is don't do life alone. Don't do life alone. We we pull ourselves back for so many reasons and feel like we have to we have to do it on our own. And bottom line is we're not meant to, and we're not supposed to, and it's actually not why we're here in this world. We are, I really believe we're here to connect with one another. We're here to to share our strengths. We're here to learn from one another. And often we make, you know, when we keep ourselves alone, we keep ourselves stuck. You spoke about that just a second ago, feeling stuck. Well, often if you don't allow yourself to reach out and ask for help, uh, receive feedback, stay open, then your perspective stays very stuck. So I know for me, there's no way I would be where I am today if it wasn't for the people in my life, you being one of them, who have helped me so much in in this path, um, you know, when you've created your whole identity in one area and you thought that's what you were going to be doing for the rest of your life and then life causes you to have to relook at it, it can be a very scary thing. And um, I'm just so grateful for the people that have come into my life, which is why I pay it forward, which is why I'm here to pay it forward. Um, nobody nobody needs to, to feel like they have to stay on that path alone. Yeah. Why would you when there's so many great mentors and leaders and friends and family that we can lean on for support and ask for help. It also serves their purpose by being able to, to connect with you. And I, I, I live that every day with my husband. I ask him, you know, honey, what's your why? And his why is to make me happy. <laughs> well, how beautiful is that? Right. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. And, and he's, and it's so true. And the proof is he's happy because he gets to do what he loves to do every day. And thank goodness for that, because I wouldn't know where I'd be without my partner in life and my best friend and my cheerleader and everything that Ken is. And it's so great. I feel very blessed not only to have a great life partner uh, with my husband, Ken, but also the community. And I have to be honest, and I know that we both felt the same way this year coming back to Camp Fit Pro, you know, I took for granted the conferences every year. And then all of a sudden it was like that. It was impossible to come together. It made me really appreciate the power of connection with others when we had the opportunity to come back together, whether it was the fist bump, the elbow bump or the hug. It's like, there's nothing that can replace that live in-person connection. And uh, I know you're 
you have that same desire as I do. I want to connect, uh, tie into the connection with ourselves because this is where your best, your work and your transformation and your career is taking you. So let's talk about connection with ourselves, our bodies and with food. Mm-hmm. This is, it, this is important, if not even more in set, essential than connection with others. So this is where your work and your commitment and your contribution to serving the world is focused. I'd love you to share more um, about that and help everyone learn more about this type of connection and also how people can work with you if they're going through this journey and they need some assistance or coaching. Oh, thanks so much for that opportunity. Yeah, the work that I do for anyone who's new to me is, well, I do many different things. Um, I'm working with mindset for sure conscious thoughts and beliefs, but ultimately when it comes down to our relationships with ourself, our relationships around food, um, exercise, all of these pieces, it's really understanding what it is that we are missing in our lives or why we feel that we need to be something that we're not in order for us to be loved, in order for us to be enough. So I support Mm -hmm. women with disordered eating patterns. So That would be anything like someone who is always feeling like they are needing to monitor what they eat, worrying obsessively about scales, uh, any type of unhealthy relationship with food. And what I mean by that is someone who is finding support through food to a point that they feel that is no longer healthy for them. So this would be excessive emotional eating, uh, someone who is potentially finding themselves binge eating or overeating, and they don't understand why my my unique approach. And this is, of course, all my story. We often do what we do because of our own journeys is I lived on a scale and used a scale to measure my worth to try and be what I thought I needed to be. And it became very obsessive and very unhealthy to the point that it ultimately made me leave my career to begin my healing journey, which is what I do now. So ultimately, we have to recognize that sometimes food comes into our life in, in our world in health, we've learned that we need to have more strength. We need to have more willpower. But what I like to educate people on is that if we are finding support through food or some type of other substance, we are doing it to try and make ourselves feel better on some level. Is it always a healthy behavior? No, it's not, but it's what our body needs at that time. So it's nervous system regulation. It's connection. If, if I'll give you an example, Mo. If someone has no one in their life, they have no connection. They have no people in their lives to be themselves around. Maybe every time that they share their voice, they are told that what they're saying is stupid. So they've silenced their voice. They've silenced their emotions and they've pushed them down deeply. Well, no wonder food comes in to support you. It is something that does not speak back to you. It's a place where you can connect It's a place where you can suppress and numb and push down what it is that you're not knowing how to deal with yet. So that's why I talk a lot about the soul is is because these parts of ourselves have been with us for a very long time, often from our childhood. So my my training in eating psychology and mind-body nutrition allows me to help people find pleasure and nourishment in food again, but ultimately embrace and recognize that our bodies are all diverse and that health is not going to be determined by the size of your body, but from a holistic approach. So uh, I love what I do. I've been very blessed to be able to work with people all around the world doing what I do. Even from, there's one client I can think of uh, who was, he's a professional athlete and aspiring for the Olympics. And for him, he was in a weight-based sport. And so he had childhood trauma where food came in to support him. And ultimately, you of course, when you're in a sport that requires weight, um, he came to me and I was able to support him. And, and so this is, these are the gifts that I get to do and, and help women. I'm leading a body image workshop tomorrow. So even learning how to recognize and support and love who we are, because if I can love who I am and if I can accept who I am, then I'm going to be able to make deeper connections with people as well. And it it ultimately lets us just have a more joyful life, a more peaceful life, and encourage the people around us to, to have more fun. Because I'll tell you, I'm a different person now, now than I used to be. Uh, I'm more loving towards my husband. I'm more loving towards my children. I am more loving as a friend, and I have so much more fun. <laughs> so, um, yeah, oh, that's wow. a little bit about the work that I do, Mo. Thank you for that. Wow. I, you know, I, I, 
I get to work with you a lot and I learn so much of the importance of working through our relationships in this particular case with food Mm -hmm. and all. And what I could think about was I just wish you were one of my professors Mm -hmm. in university and in high school, because for performance, as far as being making the cut for a team, Mm -hmm. I had to lose weight to be on the cheerleading squad at a certain university here in Canada. And my relationship with food was, it was, it was a negative, right? It was holding me back. It, mm-hmm. And I, I, I'm so grateful that I, I had a lot of family support uh, who was observing what was going on. But I just wish that that was one of my courses. I'm just putting it out there. If anyone is viewing this that has the opportunity to influence a curriculum in your college or university, you need to connect with Kim. Because I think this is should be a mandatory course for anyone that is in fitness lifestyle or any health health professional courses or or uh, certifications. Speaking of that, I know that you donate a lot of time and uh, you know you I, I want to commend you for that. You've won a number of awards uh, as uh, for the work that you've done. I want to jump in and talk about you know an award that Camfit Pro created two over two years ago. And we awarded it for the first time last year at Women Who Influence at our global event for Campfit Pro. And, and as mentioned earlier, you were our inaugural recipient of the Sharon Mann Inspiration Award and Scholarship for your courage, for the work that you do, the impact that you've created, the mentorship that you've provided, and the joy that you bring people to be their authentic self. This is all in spirit of Sharon Mann. And I, Sharon was a dear friend of both of ours. I know that you followed her a lot in your um, fitness career Mm -hmm. as a mentor. And I know Sharon would agree with me that you receiving this award in her memory was well, is well-deserved. I'd love for you to share what this award and um, receiving that award meant to you. And then we'll jump in and we'll talk about why those that have been searching for an opportunity to rise might consider nominating someone or themselves for this award in 2023. Oh, absolutely. I'd love to talk about this. I have to say when I was uh, chosen as the recipient of the Sharon Man Inspiration Award, I was so shocked. I, you know, I, I often do that, you know, I, I tend to <laughs> dismiss myself, um, but winning this award it was it was just such an important um, reminder and representation of the work that I'm doing. I think I, I mean many people know this. When I left I the fitness career in the way that I was working in it, I really thought my work was done because of the way that the industry was at the time. But I continued to do what I needed to do. Little did I know that the work that I was doing was being watched and recognized and celebrated. So it made such a huge difference for me and a reminder for me. I'm sitting here. I'm going to bring it up. I've got my crystal in front of me. This crystal sits here with me. It is a reminder for me to continue to lead with courage, to do things that are scary sometimes, uh, to, to try and find my way through it. This is um, the work that I do is very, there's a lot of mixed messages about it. There's a lot of misunderstandings. There's still a lot of minds that are closed to the work that I do. But this this award tells me to continue to lead with courage, to inspire, to impact, to create change with the people that I can create change with. Because I'll tell you this, Mo, I realize and I believe so much in the ripple effect. If I can impact one woman, I actually have a client who took everything that I've taught her and she went to her doctor and she was teaching her doctor about it. Like this was huge for me. Uh, So this is the ripple effect that can happen. And this reward, this award will continually remind me to keep moving forward, even when I don't know necessarily where I'm going next. Well, certainly exemplifies Sharon Mann, because mm-hmm. there were times I remember conversations with Sharon and she would just say, you know, why don't people understand that tariff free music is necessary? Like she was a, an innovator and really transformed the in- industry in so many different ways. And she would always find a way to channel her desire and sometimes her 
such desire and passion as she felt frustrated because she wanted to move the industry along, but she just kept persevering, showing up, lighting up rooms and lighting up a room with that smile of Sharon's is because she showed up authentic, authentically. Right. And she taught us so much about that. So for those who like, what advice would you give to those who would be interested in either nominating someone or nominating themselves? What advice would you give? I would say go for it. Like we are so quick to think that we're not good enough. That's just what we do. We're always in comparison. But I say that if you have any nudge whatsoever to go for it, whether that be for yourself, whether that be for nominating somebody else who you know works so hard and leads with those same um, values that Sharon did, nominate yourself and nominate someone else. I'll tell you, regardless of the outcome, and first of all, you don't know the outcome, so don't don't pretend you do know the outcome, but regardless of it, you will learn so much about yourself. I loved every single minute of the application process. It is work, but it's work that was so important for me because it allowed me to look back on everything that I've accomplished. And that also instills a passion and fuels you to keep moving forward. And, um, just go for it, you know, and ask for help, like reach out. That's one of the things, Mo, I think about our relationship along the years is, is that I've always like let you know when I was working towards something and I asked for guidance. And so find those people who are doing the things that you want to do come out. I, I will do this as an open invitation right now. I hope that I get like a hundred phone calls, but reach out to me. <laughs> I'll find time. I'll create space, um, but reach out to me and, and ask me. And I would love to be a part of, of your um, fuel to help you create your package together. Oh, wow. Well, we'll make sure at the end that you share how people can contact you. Uh, I do want to say that, yes, it is work, but as you said, it's so rewarding. It reveals things that, again, you underestimate about yourself, especially when you follow the application, when we ask you how you, you know, go about doing the four things that represented what Sharon stood for in the application. So for those who are curious, you can jump right on to campfitpro.com and look under the menu bar for events, scroll down, check out our events coming up and look for the Sharon Mann Inspiration Award. It is within its own page, or you can check out Women Who Influence, the event that takes place on the Thursday preceding our global event. So quickly, Kim, can you share with everyone, why would someone consider coming to Women Who Influence and do they need to be in the fitness industry to attend that day? Uh, Women Who Influence is, I, I have to tell you, it's my highlight, Mo. It's my highlight of the Camp Pro Weekend. It's the kickoff. No, you do not need to be a fitness presenter or someone in the fitness industry to attend. If you love being in a room of, of women, mind you, there's always some men there too, which is fantastic. Uh, but we come together. We, we support one another. You get to hear such powerful stories of women who are creating change. They're ones that are trailblazing their path. I, I, to me, it's the best day because not only are you like learning from the speakers, but you create such connections with the women that are at your table. You see people you haven't seen for a long time. It's a great networking space too. So I highly, highly recommend it. I go every single year. Oh, great. And we started Women Who Influence 10 years ago uh, because it was very rare to find a women's networking event within the fitness industry. And so Daringly, CamFit Pro decided, well, then let's begin that and and let's create that spark by courageously stepping into an event. And quite honestly, for those that are listening and viewing, that event was dreamed up five years prior to when it started. There was a lot of hesitation and concern why we should not do that event and it why it wouldn't work. It's not needed. Da, 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 da. Well, guess what? Sometimes we just need to embrace the courage to embrace equity, of course, which is the theme for this year's International Women's Day. So very proud on behalf of Campfit Pro to take that leap a decade ago. And we're going strong. You really want to participate to experience it. And through doing so, you'll be guaranteed to network and meet uh, like-minded women and men to then help you along on your journey, moving yourself forward, especially uh, in a very changing time in our industry. So closing question, actually, I'm going to ask you two. Okay. The first one is if the older self would give your younger self advice, what advice would she give and why? 
Mm -hmm. So I consider this my higher self and my, my younger self. So I, I believe so much in this. So my higher self, this version of me, this part of me that I have not met yet, who's guiding me is continually telling me to follow your heart. My heart is always the thing that tells me I can, if we stay up in our heads too much, we can find all the reasons why something won't work or why we're not the person to do it, but to follow my heart and to really allow myself to embrace who I am, my vulnerability, my sensitivity. That's what, that's what she would tell me all along. She's told me you're enough. You're enough. Now's your time. And, and what's amazing part of my human design is that this is actually the time where my soul is meant to shine. It's at this stage of my life. So I'm super excited about, you know, the years that are in front of me and where, where this work that I do um, will go. So that's what she's, you know, Oh, amazing. I hope everybody has taken from that the opportunity to reflect on what that higher self would be telling the younger self and uh, living it now because this is the time, right? Absolutely. No regrets. No regrets. Okay. All right. Here's a question that I asked in a recent webinar to our advisory panelists at CampFit Pro, mm -hmm. and it really did spark interest by our viewers on that day. And the question is, Kim, what are you working on this year that is calling on your courage to move your career or business to the next level? Whew. I would say it is creating. So I have done a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching most. So I would say it's really continuing to build my group spaces up. But I think more than that, it's my speaking. It's my speaking. It's, it's um, going and doing the things that I might not necessarily feel I'm qualified to do, but yet somebody has reached out to me and asked me to do it. Uh, I've got quite a few speaking opportunities that I've got set up for the next few months that I've been asked to do. And um, they make me excited, um, but I'm going for it because there's no better time than now. Oh, wow. I'm so, pr I'm so excited for you. Yeah. And you know what? I, I also... It's that inviting to do so. And what I love about you is that you really exemplify courage and women in leadership and that you say yes. And yes, you and you also decided to tell your brain that what you were feeling is excitement because mm -hmm. fear and excitement sit as the same emotion until your brain in, tells it what it really means. So there you go. It's the work that you need to do to reframe your mind and how to move yourself forward with that kind of support and training from those that you connect with to help you rise to. So Kim, uh, please share, how can viewers and listeners connect with you for um, a introductory coaching session or a virtual coffee? What is it you're offering? Yeah, I'm offering any of those opportunities, even for the uh, the share and man inspiration. Please feel free to reach out to me. You can head on over to my website. So www.kimbasler.com, B-A-S-L-E-R. And also, I'm very active. You can 100% find me on Instagram and Facebook. And I'm on TikTok now too, Mo. So you know what? I'm. I'm. This is the thing. When you have a, a business that you're you're building and a message you're spreading through social media, you're pretty available, right? So I invite anyone to reach out to me. I'd be pleased to to connect with you, see how I can support you, or maybe there's someone in your life that you feel I could support. Let's have those conversations. Thank you. Thank you for that offer. Please take him up on it. Oh boy. Well, we have to close off. Although, you know, you and I both know that when we get talking, we can talk for hours. We'll do that tomorrow. <laughs> Anyways, I hope all of you have enjoyed this moment with Mo and Kim. And until next time, please lead your life with courage, being authentically you. Thank you, everyone.